Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. We're working our way towards the quarterfinals in the championship with the $1,000 prize in our seventh qualifying match. It's the Clippers of Yarmouth High School. <music> Taking on the Warriors of Wells High School. That's coming up next on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. People who can work from home seem to love it. Who else loves it? Cyber criminals. Cyber coverage from Safety Insurance covers data and system restoration, data recreation, and more. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Guttner. We are down to our final two preliminary matches as we knock the 16 teams down to eight for the quarterfinals. One of today's teams could be the one to go all the way to the $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation. We have two veteran teams back with us today, both hoping to make it to the final for the first time. The Clippers from Yarmouth are making their second appearance on the show, and they're taking on the Warriors from Wells in their fifth time with us. Only one can move on. Who will it be? Let's meet the team so we can find out. For Yarmouth, we have Annie, Maddie, Sebastian, and Natalie, with alternates Adam and Matthew, and they're coached by Sarah Wilson. And for Wells, we have William, Samuel, John Paul, and Mason, with alternate Christopher, and coached by Ann Beecham. The competition has three rounds, the toss-up round, the category round, and the fun lightning round. We'll start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer that correctly. Are both teams ready? Yes. yes. I got some yes. nods there. Here we go. Round one, first question. Filthy, icky, sticky disease and prickle thorns are ailments diagnosed by what character in an animated TV series that aired its first episode in 2012? Sebastian Yarmouth. Doc McStuffins. That's right, and we're off. The Scarlet Letter and the House of Seven Gables are works by which author from Massachusetts? Go ahead, William. Hawthorne. Hawthorne is right. The longest river in Asia is what river that flows from Tibet through China and empties into the East China Sea? Mason Wells. Yellow River. That is incorrect. Yarmouth. Go ahead, Sebastian. The Yangtze. That is the right one, yes. The name of which branch of mathematics comes from Arabic words meaning reunite or restore? Go ahead, Sebastian. Algebra. Again. Algebra is right again. Up next, we have a picture question. Take a look at the monitor. In this photo, identify the oceanic trench known as the deepest point on Earth located in the Western Pacific. William Wells. The Mariana Trench. That's right. The acronym CHINOPS stands for the six elements that make up 98% of life on Earth. They are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and which other element? Samuel Wells. Sulfur. Sulfur's right. Muhammad Ali International Airport is located in what Kentucky city that is also home to a company famous for making wooden baseball bats? William. Louisville. Louisville's right. Nice job. The human body converts the beta carotene found in fruits and vegetables into retinol, a form of which vitamin? Uh, we got it in there, Sebastian. B. Uh, that's incorrect. Wells? Go ahead, William. D. It's actually A. It's actually A. We'll go on here. Known for its frequent activity and the enormous amount of lava it produces, what volcano on the big island of Hawaii has a name that means spewing or much spreading in Hawaiian? Sebastian? Mauna Kea. Uh, that's incorrect. Wells? 
No guess? Answer is Kilauea. Kilauea. Next up is the video question. So once again, look over here. Hello. My name is Joshua Chard, and I am the 2024 main Teacher of the Year, and today's video question category is Art History. Which art movement, characterized by distorted perspectives and vivid colors, emerged in the early 20th century and included artists like Pablo Picasso and George Brock? Samuel, go for it. Expressionism. Uh, incorrect. Yarmouth. Sebastian. Abstract. Also incorrect. Cubism. Cubism. Let's move on. Advocated by the Women's Christian Temperance Union, what policy became federal law with the passage of the 18th Amendment and was repealed by the 21st Amendment? Natalie. Prohibition. That's right. A best-selling novel by Min Jin Lee shares its name with what Japanese gambling machine? Uh, the answer is Pachinko. Pachinko. Here's our next question. In 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen used an image of his wife's hand to demonstrate what scientific imaging technology. A few years later, he won the Nobel Prize for that invention. Go ahead, Sebastian. X-ray. X-ray is right. In which of these sports would an athlete execute a Lutz and an Axel? Is it diving, figure skating, or wrestling? William. Figure skating. That is also right. All right, here's the math question. I think it's the first one. You've got pencil and paper in front of you. All right, here we go. How much is 3 squared times 4 squared? Sebastian. 144. Yeah, that was quick, and you got it right. All right, here's our next question. The name of what Islamic fundamentalist group in Afghanistan comes from the Pashto word for students? Uh, Mason, on the end. Taliban. Taliban is right. We move on. What term that sounds like something you do in your garden refers to a strategy in financial investing that is used to limit the potential risk of loss in a core investment? Hedge or hedging is the right answer. All the small things and what, what's my age again are songs released in 1999 by what skate punk trio from California? Maddie. Blink-182. Blink-182, yes. In ancient Egypt, height and length were measured in what unit, equivalent to about 18 inches or the length from a person's elbow to the tip of their middle finger? Sebastian? Cubits. That's also right. A uh, man is born free and everywhere he is in chains is a quote from The Social Contract, a 1762 work by which philosopher? Natalie Yarmouth. Rousseau. Rousseau, yes. Someone described as jocular would be which of these things? Athletic, funny, or studious? Natalie again. Athletic. Uh, incorrect. Wells. Go ahead, William. Studious. It's funny. It was the only other option. It's funny. That is funny, actually. All right, here we go. We move on. What Dutch painter of the 19th century produced more than 2,000 artworks in his lifetime, including The Starry Night and at least 36 self-portraits? Samuel. Van Gogh. Van Gogh is correct. In the Pokemon Media Universe, which Pokemon character evolves into Wartortle at level 16? Sebastian. Squirtle. Squirtle is correct. All right, here's the second math question. On a standard clock face, what is the measure of the angle formed between the minute hand and the hour hand when the time is 4 o'clock? Go ahead, Sebastian. 120. Yeah, you're a, math, you're a math wizard, man. You nailed both of those really, really fast. All right, here's the next question. The worldwide headquarters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is located in which U.S. state? Samuel. Utah. That's right. Tonic water is traditionally made from two ingredients, carbonated water and what bitter substance that is used as a treatment for malaria? Uh, Sebastian. Quinine. That's also right. About 60% of the world's population lives in Asia. Which continent is the second most populous with more than 1.4 billion people? Mason. Africa. Africa, correct. Henry IV was the first French king of which royal house that also included Louis XIV, Louis XV, and Louis XVI? Mason again. Bourbon. That's correct, right? Yeah, that's right. Good job. 
on June 28, 1969, what bar in New York City's Greenwich Village was the scene of a police raid and subsequent rebellion that is considered a starting point for the LGBT rights movement? Samuel. Stonewall. Stonewall is correct. People buying diamonds are told to look for the four C's, cut, color, clarity, and what other characteristic that's a unit of weight equivalent to 200 milligrams? William. Carrots. Carrot is right. What river flows through the Sea of Galilee and empties into the Dead Sea? It's the Jordan River. Next question. Led by King Alaric I, what tribe of Western Germanic people sacked Rome in August of the year 410? Uh, Mason Wells. Goths. Do we need more there? We need a little more. Visigoths. You got it. Visigoths. Nice job. Symphony number no. 94 in G major, also called the Surprise Symphony, is a 1792 work by what Austrian composer? Mason again. Mozart. Uh, incorrect. Yarmouth, you want to take a shot? It's Haydn. Haydn. The cover of an album released by the Beatles in the fall of 1969 is a photograph of the four band members crossing what road in London? Uh, Natalie? Abbey Road. Abbey Road, yes. Ah, uh, that's the end of their first round. Oh, we've got a tight one here. It's a tie game. Yarmouth and Wells are tied at 130. So, don't go anywhere. We'll meet the players when we get back. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... The Maine Education Association does a fantastic job of giving us a voice. So what do you think? Good manners. To help teachers and students realize that people support them every day. The MEA helps me be better at my job. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players with a slightly silly question. This one will be interesting. Here's the question. What are your most favorite and least favorite smells. Oh boy, here we go. Yarmouth, Annie? I'd say my favorite smell is lavender, especially Pretty. like lavender clean, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, yes, it has a, a very fresh exactly. scent. Exactly, and okay. then for least favorite, probably sulfur. Sulfur. It's a pretty classic one. Rotten yeah, eggs. I mean, you could get more specific and get it. Get, yes, you yeah. could, but you're leaving it PC for the yes. show, right? <laughs> Thank you, sure. Annie. Maddie, your turn. Um, my favorite smell is probably when my dad is baking his blueberry peach pie oh, recipe. It's man. really yummy and it smells really good. Yeah. And um, my least favorite, least favorite is probably like the sewage smell on the subways in New York. Like they just, they <laughs> it just, it's bad. just, it smells so bad. It, it, yes, yeah. there is a, you know when you're in New York City, yeah. when you're in the subway. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sebastian, your turn. Yeah, so mine are actually both food related. Good. So my favorite smell are ginger molasses cookies. Oh. Um, they're just, they're so delicious. I mean, is anyone else like starving right now after the, the blueberry peach pie and the ginger molasses Definitely. cookies? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and then least favorite is actu actually uh, cooked broccoli or cooked cauliflower. I agree. Some people love it, but I don't know. You I know can't what? handle it. I'm going to throw my wife under the bus right now because <laughs> at least two nights a week she cooks like broccoli or cauliflower. And I swear it makes the house stink. Yeah. yeah got to open all Awful. the windows after that. Yes, you do, Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you. Natalie, your turn. I would say my favorite smell is the smell of leaves in the fall. Ah, yes. Especially when they're getting like baked by the, yeah. by like the sun kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great smell. And then for least favorite smell, I think I'd have to go to high school locker room. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a long time since I was in a high school locker room, but I do remember that smell. It's distinct and it's gross. Uh, we're going over to Wells. William? I'd have to say my favorite smell is artificial green apples, you know? Like, uh, the, oh, the like they put on like and candies and that stuff thing? and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can see that. And for my least favorite, I'm probably going to have to go with gasoline, you know? So that's weird because it's, for a lot of people, that's like one of their favorites, including myself. I love the smell of gasoline. Like when I don't I'm, know, I'm a it. little, it's, I, guess, I don't know. I'm a little iffy on it. it. <laughs> I'm a little iffy on it. All right. Um, Samuel, your turn. Uh, my favorite smell is probably like old books or like an old library. Okay. And yep, then yep. My, my least favorite is probably like a really nasty public bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Was, I hate yes. nasty. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. We'll, we'll <laughs> leave it there. We know why. <laughs> John Paul, your turn. Yeah, my favorite smell has to be my mom's pumpkin pie. Oh, man. I'd tell you. We, we need... 
Can we get some like uh, some food service in here? We, we gotta <laughs> like you know get something delivered real soon. And what's your least favorite, John Paul? The least favorite. I have to go with blue cheese. Uh, yeah, it's got it's funky. Yeah, it's it is, a little yeah. funky, but it tastes great. No, you don't uh, like it. They don't like the taste uh, either. No, I don't like the taste. Either. <laughs> All right, Mason, wrap it up for us. <clears throat> my uh, my favorite smell is homemade pizza. I don't know something about it. It's, mm. It goes absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> do you put toppings on it too, or do you just do yeah, cheese? Yeah, pepperoni onions. Pepperoni and onions. Really good. Good call. And uh, my least favorite uh, has got to be cigarette smoke. Every time mm. I smell it, I cough. That's how bad it is. So I don't like cigarette smoke, but I do love the smell of like a pipe for some reason, especially like in the um, winter time. Huh. I don't know. It's kind I of one smelled of those. one before. Yeah, it smells. I don't. I think it smells good. Anyway, thank you both for participating there. The category round is next, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Alec O'Mara from Unitil, and this is your viewer question of the week. This town has less than 300 residents, but is the largest in Maine for land area. Is it Ellsworth, Wallagrass, Lincoln Plantation, or Allagash? Stay tuned for the answer later in the show. Next up, we have the category round with the following choices. Let's keep it short. Everything starts with E. Going on holiday. Looking for clues, we go back a long way, and musical zoo. Questions have increasing point values and wrong answers will cost you. Each team will alternate control of two categories. With each question, they can choose to answer and either gain or lose points. They can skip and neither gain nor lose points. Or once per category, they can toss it to the other team and force them to answer the question. Players will have five seconds to confer and decide what to do. We had to flip a coin to see who goes first because we have a tie game. And Wells, you won the coin toss. Uh, the coin caught. The coin toss. Easy for me to say. Uh, where do you want to start, guys? Let's go. With, everything starts with E. Everything starts with E. So all responses start with the letter E. Here we go with the first one. Defined as a repetition of sound, what four-letter E word comes from the name of a nymph in Greek mythology who fell in love with Narcissus? Echo. Echo is right. Uh, everything starts with E, 15. A congressional act from 1917 is known by what name that refers to gathering information about the national defense of the United States with intent for it to be used against the United States? Espionage. Also correct. Everything starts with E for 20. Sometimes called an aubergine, what vegetable is the traditional main ingredient of baba ganoush? Eggplant. Eggplant, yes. Everything starts with E, 25. From the Greek word for insect, what is the name for the branch of zoology devoted to the scientific study of insects? I'll need some. Toss. You want to toss it. Okay, we're going to throw it over to Yarmouth. I will read it again before you have to answer. From the Greek word for insect, what is the name for the branch of zoology devoted to the scientific study of insects? Entomology. That is correct, Yarmouth. Nice job. And that, uh, we have one more. One more and everything starts with E. What five-letter E word is the name for a type of mournful, melancholy poem written to lament a person's death? English poet Thomas Gray wrote a famous one of these in a country churchyard. Skip. You want to skip that. The answer is elegy. Elegy. All right. Uh, now over to Yarmouth. Your first choice of categories will be... We'll go with let's keep it short. Okay, let's keep it short. So these are questions about abbreviations and symbols. OZ is the abbreviation for which unit of measurement that is equivalent to 28.35 grams? Ounces. Yeah. Ounce. Ounce is correct. The surface temperature of the sun is more than 5,700 degrees K. In this case, K stands for what? Kelvin. Kelvin is also correct. Let's keep it short, 20. Adopted to stop the depletion of Earth's ozone layer, the Montreal Protocol of 1987 called for a worldwide ban on aerosols, propellants known as CFCs. In this context, what does CFC stand for? Carbon fuel. Yeah. Skip. You want to skip this. It's chlorofluorocarbons. Chlorofluorocarbons. Let's keep it short, 25. 
Car engines are measured in what unit, abbreviated HP? That's equivalent to 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. Horsepower. Horsepower is right. Let's keep it short for 30, the last one in the category. In math and physics, wavelength is most commonly represented by what lowercase Greek letter? Lambda. Lambda's right. Nice job. Uh, back over to Wells, your second and final category will be? Let's go. We go back a long way. Okay, we go back a long way. So these are questions about ancient places and civilizations. Here we go for 10. The seven wonders of the ancient world included the pharaohs or lighthouse of which Egyptian city that was also famous for its enormous library? Alexandria. Yes. We go back a long way, 15. Archaeologists on the island of Kythnos in Greece recently found a temple filled with statues made of offerings to what Greek goddess of agriculture and her daughter Persephone? Demeter. Demeter, yes. Uh, we go back a long way for 20. A group of colossal stoneheads found at the site of San Lorenzo in Mexico were carved by the people of which civilization that arose around 1200 BCE, predating both the Maya and the Aztecs? The Olmec. The Olmec is right. We go back a long way, 425. Five ancient sites in the African nation of Burkina Faso have the remains of furnaces from as far back as 700 BCE. They were used for smelting what important metal from ore? Iron. That one's right again. Here's the last one, and we go back a long way for 30. Built in the kingdom of Kush more than 2,000 years ago, the pyramids of Meroe are located in which African country whose capital is Khartoum? Sudan. Sudan is right. Uh, Yarmouth, your second category. We're going to go with going on holiday. Okay, so these are questions about holidays and festivals around the world. Okay. Here's the first one. The traditional Inca festival of the sun is still celebrated today in the Cusco region of which South American country? Peru. Peru. Peru is correct. Going on holiday, 15. The Songkran Water Festival, which includes an annual ritual of cleaning statues of the Buddha, is celebrated in which country whose capital is Bangkok? Bang Thailand. 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 Thailand is right. <laughs> Going on holiday, 20. Hogmanay is the traditional New Year celebration in which country of the United Kingdom, where it's considered good luck if your first visitor of the New Year is a tall, dark-haired man carrying a gift? It would be between Scotland and Ireland. Yeah, it's no. not. No, yeah, pa uh, skip. skip. You want to skip it? It's Scotland. Okay. You, you were on the right track there, Sebastian. I, I, I sensed that. Going on holiday 25, the Lunar New Year festival called Tet, when people prepare for the coming of spring, is the most important annual holiday in which southeastern Asian country? Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Sebastian? can skip or toss or answer. Skip. Okay, the answer is Vietnam. Going on holiday for 30. Napi, a day of silence to mark the beginning of the new year, is most closely associated with which island of Indonesia that has a majority Hindu population? Do you think? Sumatra. Or Java. Sumatra's fine. Okay. Sumatra. Sumatra is incorrect. It's Bali. Bali is the correct answer. And that wraps up our category round. The current score is Wells 275, Yarmouth 230. This one is a tight one, and everything can change in the lightning round, so sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you do with the question of the week? It was, this town has less than 300 residents, but is the largest in Maine for land area. Is it Ellsworth, Wallagrass, Lincoln Plantation, or Allagash? The answer is Allagash. With over 128 square miles of land area, it is over 50% bigger than the second largest town, which is Caribou at just over 80 square miles. Okay, we're heading into the exciting final 90 seconds of game play, the lightning round. Players, listen up. 
You do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but do not answer until I call your name. You get 20 points for each correct answer. An incorrect answer will cost you 20, and the other team does not get a chance to answer the question. The clock is set. Good luck, Yarmouth. Good luck, Wells. We've got a great match here. Here's the first question. What Middle Eastern folktale character summons a genie by rubbing a mat? Uh, William Wells. Aladdin. Yes. What's the only chemical element with a three-letter name? Tin. Which body organ produces bile? William. Bladder. Incorrect. Liver. In a regulation game of pool, what color is the eight ball? William again. Black. Yes. What name for clay pottery comes from the Italian for baked earth? Uh, Maddie, Yarman. Ter terracotta. Yes. How many degrees are in a right triangle? Sorry, right angle. William. 90. 90, yes. Biomes of Plenty is a mod or modification for what video? Uh, Mason at the end. Minecraft. Yes. Brutus and Cassius are characters in which play by William Shakespeare? William. Julius Caesar. Yes. What tiny dog breed is named for Mexico's biggest? Chihuahua. Samuel, oh, yes, sorry. you got that right. Bundesliga is a professional soccer association in which European country? <coughs> Germany. Meaning wise human, what is the genus and species to which humans belong? Samuel Wells. Homo sapiens. That's correct. In chemistry, what property is the measure of disorder in a closed system? Annie. Entropy. Entropy, right. The title of a Stephen Chbosky book mentions the perks of being a what? Wallflower. Uh, Maddie, you did get that correct, Wallflower. We have a final score of Wells 395 and our champion there. They'll be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Runner-up Yarmouth had 290 points. I hope we see you guys again next year for another try at the championship. Thank you both for playing and congratulations to both teams. Be sure to tune in next time as Bangor takes on Hebron Academy. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Home renovations can increase the value of your home. Safety Insurance offers a variety of home insurance products to cover your home's increased value. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you, thank you. <laughs>